let's just share. Tell, tell, <laughs> okay. I know. I know. It's like, can I stop talking now for a minute? Um, so just tell the girls kind of who you are and kind of what your story was. Tell, tell them why you were so frustrated. Uh, I was frustrated because no matter what I did, like I could follow any diet, any, anything. Um, I couldn't lose any weight. And I worked out at the gym. It wasn't for lack of working out because I went to the gym probably five, six um, times a week. Um, and I was very active at the gym. I went through my doctor. I went through uh, an, a medical nutritionist. That's what I'll call them. Um, you know, about what to do because I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And um, I, in my mid thirties, finally had, I well, first I was put on, um, Depo Provera for years, way, way more years than I was supposed to. And that only made it worse for me gaining weight. Um, and I basically had doctors tell me as long as I'm on Depo, I'll never lose weight. Um, and then I went to, uh, the nutritionist later who, you know, basically told me I couldn't eat any carbs ever, which is not followable. You can't follow that. It's completely unrealistic. So I, get, I was frustrated and gave up and every year I'd go to the doctor and they'd say, you know, would they check me for diabetes? And thankfully I never had it, but I couldn't lose weight and couldn't lose weight and couldn't lose weight. So yeah, and you get frustrated. Yes. And, and that's why I, I, I'm so glad that you're sharing this with everybody because I see this all the time, but women don't believe that when they, when they go to their doctors and they don't get diagnosed with prediabetes, which is, which is fine, but they still have insulin resistance, which is a precursor to diabetes. And that's what you had. You had insulin resistance and hormone imbalance. And, and most physicians, unless you have diabetes, they don't even know what to say or what to do. And PCOS is also a form of a hormone imbalance. And when you have those things, you're never going to lose weight. And you were so frustrated. And I felt that emotion in you when you started how frustrated you were. And that's why I was so excited when you decided to uh, join us, because I knew with your determination, I knew that you were going to get amazing results. And so that frustration for you, Shannon, tell me, let's talk a little bit about that, that frustration that was, was happening well, for you. Initially, I thought I would be happy. So I actually did have a full hysterectomy, including my ovaries in my mid thirties. Um, and I was really happy because that actually did make me feel a whole lot better. And I was so happy to be off of the Depo Provera. But from then the frustration only got worse because I felt like now I should be able to lose weight. That's what I thought. I felt like it should happen. Um, and I just went over and over again, like trying and I just couldn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. Girl, I get it. I understand the emotion. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. And so, yeah. and I, I, and that's what I'm saying. I, I, I felt your frustration three months ago. And now my, 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 my tears I share with you are tears of joy because let's look at what you've done in three months. Let's just look, let's, let's yeah. bring these, these happy you, tears. I mean, it was just in, giving up and feeling hopeless. That's how I would explain how it was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you remember this, but when you first signed up with me, I make you guys do a intake form and your top three goals were this lose weight. Obviously that's, you know, increase your energy and to three, do a mindset mindset shift because you were so frustrated yeah so we're going to talk about those three goals but look at what you've done in three months Shannon did you ever think 35.5 pounds you're down you're down <laughs> between four to six sizes and you're yeah. down 21.5 inches in three months and you were told that would never happen yeah well I kept being told that I needed to do it but then you know I couldn't get any everything they would tell me wouldn't work so Right. Yeah. And so your top three goals, one was to lose weight. That was your top goal. Have you lost? Yes. Weight? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Your next goal was increase your energy. Talk about that. When you, when you started, you, you said you had to take naps and you were just so fatigued and you were working. I was lot. tired. I was tired all the time. Like at, at work, I'd be sitting there and I'd literally just be tired all the way through work. Um, and when I came home, I didn't want to do anything. It's just like sit in the chair um, I didn't even come home. I was still pretty active doing things, but I'd be tired, like being active doing things. Um, and I just felt 
very sluggish all the time. Like whether I was at work, whether I was doing things, um, just constantly, like I just felt like I didn't have the energy to function through the day. Um, and how do and you feel now? Like in three months, how do you feel? I feel I, I have the energy to do everything. Like I get up and I go to work. I'm not tired. I, I actually, in thinking about some of, you know, some questions here, I literally was like, oh, I didn't even realize that I'm not tired anymore until just now. Cause it's just not even a factor on my radar anymore. Like I'm not tired. I get up, I go to work. I work 10 hour days. So I get all the way through work. And then after that, like I'm pretty much running to the gym to go um, do my aqua zoom. I do aqua zumba, regular zumba, kickboxing, and kind of some strength training. And now I just added yoga classes in. So amazing, girl. So, so amazing. And then your third goal was you wanted a mindset shift because you had a lot of frustration and you had a lot of shame and guilt about your weight. And it wasn't your fault. You just didn't. You didn't have the right tools to understand why. So you were, you were yeah. taking it personally, like there's something you were doing wrong, but you weren't doing anything wrong. You just didn't know. So yeah. talk about, talk about how that has shifted for you. The, the frustration, which was one of your top three goals. How has that changed for you? I just felt like food had complete control over me. And, um, now like it doesn't now I know how to beat food. And sometimes it, so it happened last month, you know, that it kind of was crawling back up and it would have been the end for me like before. And, um, I figured, you know, I'm like, I realized last month, I'm like, okay, I now figured out I have the tools to get control back and to figure it out. And, um, and I turned it around. I turned it around pretty fast last month and I pretty much was able to reset myself and get myself right back on track within a matter of like two or three days. And, um, before that would have been, just the, the start of a complete downslide because just food had total control over me. And that's just not a factor anymore. Like I, if, if it's happening, you know, it's only happened once in the time. Um, but I feel like, you know, if, if it's happening, I realized like it dawned on me, I barely even had to think about it. I'm like, okay, I know how to fix this and I'm going to fix it. So, right. And that's the cycle, right? It's like w most women are super good at dieting. I like they'll lose the weight, they'll lose weight, but then how do you keep it off and how do you make it sustainable? Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. It's like, if you don't learn the skill set, which you know, is what I'm, what we're learning and what you're doing so well at, and yeah, we're going to make mistakes and that's all a part of the process. But if you don't learn how to do this for the rest of your life, you're going to mm -hmm. keep going with the cycle of gaining and losing and gaining, losing. And you have, you, you're, you're learning this. You will not, you will not be in that cycle again. Yeah. You will, you will, you have, you're learning. You're going to keep growing. You're going to make sure your weight keeps coming off and you're, it's going to stay off. I know it will because you are, are grasping onto everything that you're learning. And obviously your results show it girl. Amazing. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Has, has I'm not, been, not sorry. Not at all. So <laughs> yeah. Was it, I mean, has it, has it been hard? Um, so I think the hardest part was like, I I'll call it getting your ducks in a row, like the figuring out like, okay, so I know I have to do this. I know what, you know, what we're being taught in the Academy. So it's just going through and actually like doing it. That's, it's not even hard. It's just, you know, shifting, like you have to shift. That's it. You know, it's like make the shift. You've been doing the same thing over and over, you know, for years, you just have to make your shift. And then once you make your shift, it's not hard, not yeah, at all. Right. Because look at your hard before, look at, look at three and a half months ago. Yeah. Was that hard? With yes. Being 35.5 pounds heavier, 22 inches more you know, bigger and, and up six sizes and, and the fatigue, I mean, wasn't that hard? <laughs> that was, that was horribly hard and I couldn't do anything. So, um, like at the yoga class, I just started going to, um, I, I literally, you know, that I'm like, I can't do floor stuff. I can't, it's impossible. I've never, I can't do it. Um, and he was like, well, I'll give you modifications and whatever. And I realized as I was going through the class that being the 35 pounds lighter, like I could do a whole lot more stuff on the floor than I could do before. Um, so I, I didn't, I 
did a couple of his modifications, but mostly, you know, I was able to pretty much do the whole thing. So I'm just like literally going back and, you know, after class, he came and talked to me and he's like, I'm not sure what you were worried about because um, he's like, you did great in class. And I'm like, yeah, but I wouldn't have been able to do that before. Like, I just didn't realize that 35 pounds ago, you know, like I, it changed that much for me. And, and you know what, some of the ladies watching this, you know what they're thinking, right? They're saying, well, I could never lose 35 pounds in three months. That just, it's, it's, I, I can't do that. Talk, tell the girls who have that I couldn't mentality. Lose 10, I couldn't lose 10 pounds in five years. So um, I really didn't think, didn't think, you know, so I will say total, I've actually lost 46 pounds. It's just 35.5 has been with the Academy. I did manage to lose 10 pounds before this and that was it. I couldn't lose any more. And that was over a very extreme, extremely long period of time. So no, you would have never, I would have never believed, you know, that yes, I can lose 35.5 pounds in three months. No, never. I would never have believed that. Never. And losing weight, you know, especially in your situation, because, you know, I, again, even though this is a diabetes and weight loss clinic or, or academy, so if, if women are overweight and having a hard time losing weight, there's something internally unbalanced in the body and everybody needs to learn this stuff. Everybody, every yeah. woman, everybody, every woman needs to learn it. And so your story is so important, Shannon, because there's gonna be so many women that, that listen to you and they're gonna be like, that's me, that's me. So what would you say to them? What would you, how would you encourage them to say, you know, girls, I understand you. I hear you. This is what we need to do. What would you tell so them? So for me, I will say that, you know, when I, so I'll just say I, I met Terry at a cycle class for a full year before. Um, and, and it was just going to a cycle class with a friend of mine. That wasn't even for me really to go to cycle. I was going with a friend of mine. I had no idea she did this academy. My friend never once said that she did this academy. Um, and I was at my lowest point. Like literally I was like, this is the end. Um, I'm, I'm done. Like I give up. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. Nothing works. Um, and I saw somebody else's video for this academy here and she didn't have diabetes either. And she couldn't lose weight either. And I started watching more of them and I started to realize that so for a whole year, there's a person that specializes in some, in this problem that I have that nobody else can help me with, not even medical nutritionists or doctors or anything. But here's a lady that has been on my Facebook for like a year, um, who knows how to do this. So then I, I double checked, I, I, I messengered her to Terry to make sure that Um, that she could help me. And yes, she said she could. And so I didn't even care how much it cost or anything. Like it was either this or nothing. It was either this or continue to be miserable for the rest of my life. And I thought I have nothing else to lose. There's nothing left. So it's either do this and see how, you know, if I can recover, you know, and I had, I didn't even say this earlier, I had horrible knee pain going on. Um, and I, I didn't even thinking about things for this. It never even occurred to me until I was thinking about it, you know, things for this that I realized I don't even have that knee pain anymore. So you have nothing to lose except for knee pain, body pain, weight, um, feeling like I feel lighter. I feel cleaner. I feel happier. I feel gratitude in life. I never felt any of that before. I just felt depressed and sad and hopeless and ashamed. So yeah, there's, you have nothing to lose. This, this is why the Academy is here. It's these stories that, you know, we talk in the Academy about the hard why, why, what you guys, this is, this is my hard why is being able to see somebody like you, who's beautiful and have so much going for her, but is so miserable being able to change that to becoming a new person yeah, and, and to learn how to do that the right way and long-term. And yes. That, there's no, there's, there's, there's no price you can put on that. That's so yeah. valuable. And that I'm so proud of you, Shannon. I'm so Thanks. proud of you. And I'm so happy for you. Cause I, 
I just, I love seeing you smile and seeing your joy. And three months ago, that was not there. No, it's definitely not. Yeah. And I've like met, you know, made so many new, I've met so many new people along the way, like the people in the Academy, like the people in the Academy will become, you know, just, so I can't even be on a lot of the calls because of my gym schedule. And by the way, I just want to say, Terry does not make you go to the gym all the time. So don't, um, I don't want to mislead people into that. As a matter of fact, you know, she's like, initially Terry said, knock it off, quit going to the gym so much. Um, and I pretty much was like, I'm still going to the gym and you're just going to have to work around it, you know, kind of thing. Um, so don't think that you're going to go to the gym and, and, you know, and spend all your time at the gym. Cause you're, you're not, um, I just happen to love Zumba and love what I'm doing. Um, so, but even, even not being on a lot of the calls that a lot of people are on, um, you will still meet the people in the Academy and you will still, um, become friends with the people in the Academy and the, the, the support and everything is still there no matter um, no matter how many calls you can or can't make or be on. Um, so I met so many people in the academy along the way. I still love all of them and their support, but along the way too, just in your journey, you don't even realize, even though I was going to the gym, um, you don't even realize that. Like I, I'm now a, like extremely good friends with my Zumba instructor, you know? So along the way, you just have other things that come up that you don't even realize are benefits you'll meet along the way. So. Exactly. I mean, as you start growing in other areas of your life, you're, you know, like you, your third goal was your mindset shift. And that, mm -hmm. as, as you know, moving forward now inside the academy, that is what we focus on a lot because we want to make sure that these results that you're getting and continue to get will be forever. And, and with yeah. that, we have to have growth and, and life coaching. And so I just know the future for you is going to be bright and strong. And I can't wait to see future growth in you. Congratulations. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story with these women because I know that it's going to resonate with so many. And you make me so proud, Shannon. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Thanks. Danae, I tell you, um, I tell you, I, uh, whoops, I'm going to get, whoops, let's get rid of this here. <laughs> um, I tell you, I, every time I watch that interview, I, I, I just, I tear up. And if you haven't seen the whole thing, I would recommend that you watch Shannon's entire interview because Shannon is a perfect example of what insulin resistance does to us and our bodies. And that's what we're talking about today. We are talking all about insulin. So this is class two in our four class series. I'm so glad that you are here. If you have not printed out your workbook, um, I did send everybody who raised their hand and sent me an email and went to academyworkbook.com and wanted this workbook, you should have received it. If not, it's probably because you sent me the wrong email address, but um, if you want this workbook so that you can follow along every single day as we talk about the different topics throughout the week, then just go ahead and print this out. And today we are on page four and we're talking about insulin, weight loss, and diabetes. So listen, yesterday uh, we talked about how to get your blood sugars down pretty instantly based on a few things I asked you to do. I'm wondering if anybody has done, has started doing those things, because if you start doing some of those things I suggested yesterday, by tomorrow and Thursday, you should see some results. You should see some change in your numbers, okay? And uh, so I want you guys to be doing that. And then today we're gonna talk all about insulin. Now, yesterday I touched on it, because when you have prediabetes or diabetes, which a lot of you in this group do, you more than likely have insulin resistance, okay? However, you can have insulin resistance without being diagnosed with diabetes, just like you heard Shannon testify here a little bit ago, right? She had been to medical doctors, was not prediabetic, was not um, di uh, diagnosed with diabetes, but nobody could tell her she was insulin resistant. She was diagnosed with PCOS, 
but that basically is insulin resistance. And so in, in the medical arena, they just aren't, they don't know how to create balance in the body and help with that condition. So this is why what we do in the academy is we really specialize in how to create balance in the body so that you're, you will heal your body on a cellular level. You guys hear me say that a lot in this group because that's what we have to do for diabetes, prediabetes, type 2, any, any, any pre-existing condition, anything you've been diagnosed with by a medical doctor. What they're going to do is they're going to always want to prescribe you medications as their solution. What I do is I work with your medical doctor, and what we do is we try to actually find out what is the underlying reason? Why? What's the why? Why, 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 why? Why do you have prediabetes? Why do you have diabetes? Why, why do you have type 2? What's going on? Because type 2 diabetes, prediabetes is not a lack of metformin. Type 2 diabetes, prediabetes is not a lack of drugs. That's not why you have diabetes. You have diabetes because there's been something that has been breaking down inside the body on a cellular level, physiologically wise, and it's just needs to be fixed, right? So we take a look at the underlying root cause, which I talked a lot about yesterday. So if you have not watched yesterday's video, watch that replay because that would be good for you to watch before um, you, you know, watch the rest of the series this week. So, um, Go ahead and print off your workbook or put your workbook down in front of you. We're going to get started. Why don't you go ahead and grab yourself a little drink? I got my vitamin water here. It's very orange today because I added extra minerals. I felt like I needed my minerals, more minerals today. So, so let's get rocking. Here we go. We are talking about insulin resistance. Okay. So... On the very top of your page, okay, the first question is insulin is a what? Can anybody tell me what insulin is? Insulin is actually a hormone. It's a hormone in your body that is produced inside your body in your organ called the pancreas. So your pancreas is located kind of kind of right under above your um right underneath your rib cage, kind of between your liver and your stomach, right in the kind of the center. And when your blood sugars get high, your pancreas automatically knows what to do. It releases insulin and insulin is designed to take the sugar in the body if it's too high and bring it down. And, and how the body brings the sugar down is by insulin. And insulin takes the sugar out of the blood and pushes it into the liver cells, muscle cells, or, or fat cells, okay? Yesterday, we talked about where your blood sugars should be, right? And how, you know, when your blood sugars are really high, chronically high, it's not good. And I talked about where the normal level should be. So go back and watch that, that class one if you need that data. But when your pancreas releases insulin to lower the blood sugars, and let's say your blood sugars stay high, 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 what that means, you guys, is that your body is not being able to receive the sugar into the cell via insulin. That is what insulin resistance is. The cell, pretend this is your cell, okay? Pretend this is the insulin. So let's say you ate something and your blood sugar is high. Your pancreas releases insulin because it senses the sugar is high. Insulin comes in, it grabs the sugar, and it tries to push it into the cell. So it tries to push the sugar into the cell so that the blood sugar will low, will, will become lower. However, if your blood sugar doesn't get lower, it's because it's not able to get in the cell, and that's because the insulin can't push the sugar into the cell. That cell, it's blocked. Think of this like a door. Okay, if somebody's knocking on your door and you don't answer the door, right, the person can't come in. If you answer the door, the person can come in. If the door, right, is the cell and you are insulin, you are opening the door to let that person in, that is how, that is how insulin works. So if it's resistant, that means the, 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 you never open the door. You're ignoring the person knocking on the door. The cell is ignoring the insulin. It doesn't, it doesn't 
open it up. Okay, so that's what insulin is. Insulin resistance, so number two on your worksheet, is insulin resistance is the inability for insulin to get into the cells. That's what insulin resistance is. You can have insulin resistance and not have prediabetes or diabetes. If you have type 2 diabetes, you probably have insulin resistance. Okay. I mean, 99.5% sure you do. Okay. And those of you who are, have not been diagnosed with prediabetes or diabetes, you probably have insulin resistance and, and don't even know it. But you're, the, the thing too is that if you have insulin resistance and don't know it and you aren't sure how to fix it and how to create that balance and fix the cells, it will turn into prediabetes. Shannon, she was on her way to prediabetes. Right, so her A1C was normal now, but she she had insul severe insulin resistance, and she, if she would have kept not fixing the insulin resistance, it would have turned into prediabetes and then diabetes. It was just a matter of time. That's the progression. Your body can't stay in insulin resistance forever; it will break down. Okay, so that's the step. You know, you have a symptom. Remember yesterday, I talked about the red engine light coming on in your car. Right, if the red engine light comes on, you want to fix the red engine light because you're worried that there's something wrong with the engine. The red engine light for us is a symptom. When we have a symptom, we don't need, we shouldn't ignore it. So a symptom will be fatigue, weight gain, high blood sugars, migraines, knee pain, aches and pains, PCOS, any diagnosis is a symptom, right? That should not be ignored. We have to then take that symptom and figure out, okay, what's why? Why do I, why is the red engine light coming on? Why is, why do I have the symptom? Okay, putting medication on a symptom is not fixing the underlying problem. When the red engine light comes on, if you, you don't just put your hand over the red engine light because you don't want to you want to see the light anymore, right? No, you want to you want to figure out how to turn the red engine light off, not just put a your hand over it to cover the light. It's the same thing in the body. So we really have to, you know, be careful not to ignore the symptoms and when the symptom flares up, that's just your body giving you a signal that something is off, okay? So for that insulin, um, for the, let me, before I do that, let me show you this, um, let me show you this picture here real quick. So here's the cell, you know, that I was telling you about the cell. Here's the cell I was telling you about. This is, pretend this is your door, right? And this is the key to unlock the door. So when you have glucose in the body, sugar in the body, um, insulin allows the sugar to enter the cell, okay? When the sugar can't enter the cell due to, you know, it being resistant, then the sugar stays in the body, okay? Here's what you need in order for the door to open in order for the key to work in the lock in order for glucose to get into the cell. Okay. You need minerals present in the cell. So there's specific key minerals that your body, your body needs on a cellular level in order for your body to receive insulin. The problem is, is because insulin is blocking this, it's, it's really hard for the minerals to get in the cell. And, and the reason, one of the reasons why the cell is mucked up is because of, because of fat. So if you have a lot of the bad sort of triglyceride, fatty, mucky stuff in your, in your blood, it's mucking up this receptor. So think of it like, think of like if there's gum in here, like if there was gum in your lock, in your door, and you tried to put the key in, do you think the key would be able to unlock the door to let the person in? Or to let you in the house? No, because there's there's gum in there. You can't open the door. That's what's happening on a cellular level is that you've got triglycerides and all this these trans fats and bad mucky fats that are blocking up this, this receptor. And so the insulin can't let, let the sugar into the cell, okay? So when that is happening on a cellular level, that is what's going on. And that's why I always say, you guys, that's why I always say we've got to fix the prediabetes, the type 2, the insulin resistance on a cellular level because the medication only puts a hand over the red light. It only puts a Band-Aid over the situation. It does not fix the underlying problem, okay? 
So that is your, on your question number two, that is the answer for that. For, for insulin to work to open the door, right? Two things must happen. You have to have mineral present, present inside the cell. And then you need uh, to make sure that we get rid of those fat, that the, the fat in the body, the fat to not being able to mock up the cell. And you do that through, there's a bunch of different ways, but it's never just one thing, but there's a bunch of different things that we have to do it in order to fix that. So just like Shannon, you know, she was so unable to lose weight. She was told, you know, that she what didn't have prediabetes, right? And didn't have diabetes, but she couldn't lose the weight. And so she was insulin resistant. So that's why you can be overweight and not be diabetic. Because a diagnosis of diabetes, how you diagnose, how your doctors medically diagnose you with prediabetes and diabetes is based on your A1C. We talked about that in class one, right? We talked about how A1C and blood sugar are the two ways where you get a diagnosis from your medical doctor. So if you go to your medical doctor and you get an A1C test and your A1C is over 5.7, you're you are now on your way to getting prediabetes. The higher the A1C, you know, the 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 more progressed your diabetes is. I think when you get to 6.2 or 6.1, then you're diagnosed with type 2. Okay, so Shannon, you know, her her A1C was normal. It was 5.3, I think, or something like that. So, and she didn't have diabetes, but she had insulin resistance. And if she wouldn't have fixed the insulin resistance, it would have eventually ended up into uh, pre-diabetes or type 2. So that is why you can be a non-diabetic but still have insulin resistance. But if you are a diabetic, pre or type 2, you do have insulin resistance. You just do. So how do I know? That's what we're going to look at next is how do I know? Like, how do I know if I'm insulin resistance or pre-diabetic or type 2? Well, there's a few ways, okay? One is, is if you go to your doctor and your A1C is normal, but you are having symptoms like, uh, you know, weight, like PCOS, you can't lose weight, you're having kind of symptoms like a pre-diabetic, so you're craving, have cravings all the time. You know, I don't know if you can, guys can see this, but um, symptoms of insulin resistance are you have a large appetite, you will have fertility issues. You're going to meet somebody this week who had insulin resistance, who was unable to get pregnant uh, until she fixed her insulin resistance. Now she's pregnant currently. Right now she's pregnant with a, a baby, and she was unable to get pregnant on her own before. Um, and when she fixed her insulin resistance, now she can get pregnant. So um, that's an, a symptom. If you are unable to lose weight, even if you're working out and you're just not able to lose weight, you have insulin resistance, okay? If dieting doesn't work, if you're doing all these low calorie diets and that doesn't work, any diet, if it doesn't work, you have insulin resistance, right? If you're hungry all the time, right? If you're hungry all the time, you're, you have, that's a sign of being insulin resistant. Why? Because when you eat, the food that you eat that breaks down into glucose is not entering the cell. So your cells are starving. So it's requiring, it's trying to tell your body, I need food. So it raises your insulin and insulin, high, having high insulin, as you learned yesterday, having high insulin is very inflammatory, which is going to give you inflammation and give, um, make you have cravings and all your hormones are going to be off. We're going to talk about hormones tomorrow. You guys have to tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow's class is going to be amazing. We're talking about hormones and all the hormones you as women need to learn about, okay? Um, also, if you have fatigue, you heard Shannon, chronic fatigue, right? I'm going to introduce you to another lady today. Her name is Brandy, and she also had uh, insulin resistance, just tired and had a lot of aches and pains in her body. If you are, you know, chronically fatigued, that's a sign of chronic fatigue syndrome is a sign of insulin resistance, okay? Hormone issues, like I said, being diagnosed officially with PCOS, high testosterone, um, fertility issues. And then, of course, if you're diagnosed with prediabetes, you have insulin resistance. If you have a lot of skin tags, uh, skin tags and acne are also a sign of, of high insulin, a sign of insulin resistance, and a sign of a hormone imbalance. So that's another reason why you might be able to determine whether or not you have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes or prediabetes. Okay. So those are a lot of, those are a lot of reasons. Okay. 
And that's how you would know. So take a look at those, sim those symptoms and see if you have any of those. If you have any of those, if you have more than one of these, hoofta, then you better, you better like, you know, better start figuring out how to, how to fix your body on a cellular level. Now, listen, um, when you go to your medical doctor, this is how you are diagnosed with actual diabetes. Okay. So if you go to your doctor and you get an uh, A1C test done and your A1C is 5.7 to 6.4, you are considered pre-diabetic. If you go to your doctor and your A1C is 6.5 to 7.9, you're considered a type two. Type one, if you initially get diagnosed with type one, um, your A1C is going to be pretty high and your blood sugars are going to be high. Type 1.5 and three are usually diagnosed a lot later. Uh, their, their type 1.5 is a symptom of, of having type two for too long and type two can turn into that. So, you know, again, you just want to make sure that when you are getting these diagnoses that you don't keep putting band-aids on the symptoms, don't keep putting band-aids on the symptoms, do something about it. And you guys, it's not too late. It's not too late to do something about it now. Okay. So on your sheet here. On your sheet, if you look down, it says, how do I know if I'm in insulin resistance or pre-diabetic? Pre-diabetes blood sugars are 100 to 125 mgDL. That would be 5.7 to 6.4% for your A1C. Type 2, your blood sugars would be 126 plus. Your A1C is 6.5 to 7.9. I'm helping you fill in your workbook. Uh, type 1 diabetes blood sugars are 150 plus, And A1C is usually 8, initially 8 or higher. Okay. Uh, question, true or false, A1C in the, is A1C the only blood test that will tell you if, you're, if you have diabetes? Currently, yes. That is how you are diagnosed with a medical doctor having your A1C done. That is how you are officially diagnosed with prediabetes or diabetes. Remember, if you, you, they don't ever do it. The A1C test is not a test for insulin resistance. They don't do the right test for insulin resistance. I, I, I do. When, when you come and work with me, I will give you a, a, a bunch of different labs, a combination of labs that you need to tell your doctor to get you that will determine where you are in your pre, where you are in your type two or your insulin resistance. They just don't do that. Okay. So that is, that is what's going on there. Okay, let's talk next about, what do you guys think? Want to go, want to go on next about, talk about insulin, I mean, inflammation? Who do we got on today? Ooh, we got quite a few. Hi, Gail. Hi, Deb. Hi, Joan. Hi, Betty. Hi, Bev. Hi, Jossie. Hi, Margaret. How you guys doing? Yay. Glad you guys are on. I'm going to keep moving along here. All right. So we are going to now talk, you're on page five. We're going to talk about inflammation. I know a few of you have emailed me saying, when are you going to talk about inflammation? Here we go. This is it. Okay. Inflammation. You guys, we have two types of inflammation. Okay. I want you to kind of understand what inflammation is. We have acute inflammation and something called, something called, um, oh, chronic. Huh. Look at that. I forgot to put the right slide in. There we go. Well, huh. I guess I'll stop sharing these slides. We'll talk about them this way instead. I forgot to put the, the chronic inflammation slide in. So we have acute inflammation and acute inflammation. Just think of it this way. Acute inflammation is short-term inflammation. So that would be like, oh, let's say you were walking and you stepped on a bee and you got a bee sting, right? And you know how when you get a bee sting, it hurts. And, and then the sight of the bee sting, it flares up and it gets red and it might get pussy, right? Your body knows exactly what it needs to do on the inside to be able to start healing that injury, okay? Um, another example would be surgery or if you sprained your ankle. It's short term. It's inflammation. Your body knows what it needs to do to heal the wound, a cut, a bruise, whatever. Okay. That is called acute inflammation. That is inflammation that will, your body will repair pretty quickly and then it's done. But then you have something called chronic inflammation and chronic inflammation is what's long-term. This is the inflammation. That's the problem. This is the inflammation that lasts and lasts and keeps getting worse and worse. And that is long-term internal things like a diagnosis of diabetes, um, a diagnosis of, of if you get a lot of um, like Lyme disease, if you get a lot of infections, you know, if you have parasites, yeast infections, um, if you have a, hor like a hormone imbalance, right, and you've been put on a bunch of medication 
for your hormones. Um, that's going to be cause inflammation in the body. So inflammation is stuff that's going on inside that is causing problems long term. Okay. And we can be feeding the long term chronic inflammation by what we're eating, by what we're consuming, but what we're putting on our skin. So we're just making the inflammation worse. The long term chronic inflammation, we're making it worse by what we do to our bodies, right? So that's the difference between the two um, kinds of inflammation. So I want to give you next, I want to show you, well, what are some of the causes of this inflammation, right? Of the long term chronic inflammation, here are the top causes of inflammation, sugar. Why? Because sugar is very inflammatory. It's very toxic. You guys have heard me say this before, but when you have high sugars in the body that can't get pushed into the cell, sugars are like shards of glass in your body. Remember, our bodies what, are only supposed to have one teaspoon or four grams of sugar in our body at one given time. Okay, so if you have one teaspoon or four grams of sugar in your body, that's about 80 mill millimoles per deciliter if you're pricking your finger or 4.4 to 5.1 um, millimoles per deciliter. Okay. If it's higher than that, it's, you're, you're going to be getting a lot of chronic inflammation and that sugar is like shards of glass. If it stays in your blood, it's like scraping your arteries and scraping and, and causing damage on a cellular level. Okay. So sugar is number one. The next one is insulin, right? So when you have high insulin, you're going to have inflammation because insulin is very inflammatory. And those of you who have high blood sugars, you do have high insulin. If you're taking insulin medications like injectable insulin or, or medications that produce your pancreas to produce more insulin like Genuvia and Trulicity and all those medications, right? Then you're going to have higher insulin in your body. And that is very inflammatory. So the goal is to what? Fix your body at a cellular level, lower the insulin, and you know, allow your body to be able to push the sugar into the cell like, like it should. The third one is GMOs. We have got to take, pay attention to what we are putting in our bodies. GMO stands for genetically modified organisms. In this group, I have a whole class I did on GMOs. If you have no idea what GMOs are, then I would watch that class I did on GMOs. But GMOs are genetically modified organisms. And what they're doing is they're injecting stuff into our food to make them grow bigger, better, and faster. And when you're putting that toxin into your body, if you eat these foods, you are causing inflammation in your body because your, your body doesn't recognize those toxins as a source of, of health. It Remember, we're either... Everything we put in, we're either feeding our health or we're feeding disease, everything. That's how you got to look at it. Every time I put something in my mouth, every time I drink something, I'm thinking, is this helping my body? Like, is it nourishing me? Is it helping me feed my health? Or is it increasing my disease, increasing my inflammation? And GMOs are always going to be inflammatory. Okay. The next one is trans fats and junk food. So anytime you put junk food in your body, you're putting trans fats in your body and, you're, and it's causing the mucking of the cell on a cellular level. So quit eating junk food because it's, it's not feeding your health. It's feeding disease and it's causing extreme inflammation in your body. Okay. The next one is stress. When you are stressed out, you are releasing, we're going to talk more about this tomorrow in the hormone section because stress is a huge factor in inflammation because it's releasing a, a very stressful hormone that we're going to talk about tomorrow. So when you're stressed out, you're causing inflammation in the body, your toxic load. Okay. So this could be anything that you're putting on your skin or you're breathing in, right? So if you're putting all this toxic lotion on your skin, if you're eating toxic food, if you're on a bunch of medications, you know, um, here's a, here's one of the things that also is a deter determination if you have a lot of inflammation in your body and, and if your toxic load is high is are you getting a lot of yeast infections are you getting sick a lot um, when you get a virus do you not recover very quickly i mean those are all signs of your body and your immune system being out of whack and inflammation will absolutely suppress your immune system so you got to be careful about what you're putting on your skin what you're putting in your body okay the next one we talked about this yesterday is gluten Anything, anytime you're having gluten in your body, it's breaking down your gut function. It's breaking down the lining of your gut, which is going to be a problem with, with um, 
what you're allowing into your bloodstream. So gluten is always going to be damaging your gut lining. Okay. So those are the top things that cause inflammation. Here are the top foods that raise blood sugar. And this kind of is review, but this is good to know, right? Sugar, all white foods, anything white that can be white flour, can be white rice, anything white is going to raise your blood sugars super fast. Carbs, okay? Carbs are going to raise your blood sugar, especially, especially if you have insulin resistance and you're, because your body is always breaking carbs into sugar. So if you have insulin resistance, your, your body's not going to be able to push that sugar in, you know, the carbs or the, the glucose into the cell, and it's going to keep your, your blood sugars high. Okay. High glycemic foods and vegetables. So the higher glycemic foods, you know, sometimes you guys think that, you know, having certain vegetables are, are fine because they're vegetables. Well, when you eat, you know, peas and corn and all of that, that have higher glycemic um, levels and higher sugar, that's going to cause your blood sugar rates. MSG, monosodium glutamate, is a hidden exotoxin that they put in a lot of uh, Chinese food and, and, and foods at restaurants and salad dressings. It's a preservative, but that will raise your blood sugar like that. Okay. And then hidden fructose. There's a lot of fructose in so many products. You've got to read labels. And then fruit and fruit juices. So most fruit, especially if you're insulin resistant, it doesn't matter if, if it, you think it's healthy or not. It's, it's sugar. And the more sugar you eat, the more fruit you eat, the more your levels are going to go up. So don't let anybody tell you that eating fruit is okay if you have type 2 diabetes. Until you fix your body on a cellular level, fruit is going to be a problem for you. Okay, it's, it's not going to fix your problem of the insulin resistance because it's, it's creating your body to be more insulin resistant, especially juices. Like if you're drinking orange juice, apple juice, you are, that is not good. Okay, so again, when you have any of these symptoms, you know, inability to lose weight, constant hunger, fatigue, PCOS, you have a lot of acne, facial hair, hormone imbalances. Um, if you have a thyroid problem, that could be partly due to insulin resistance and inflammation. Um, one of the biggest things too, is if you look down right now and you, you have a gut, right? If you have like a big belly, that is absolutely a sign of insulin resistance. Okay. You don't just wake up with diabetes or insulin resistance overnight. Okay. It, 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 it is a progressive disease over time. Okay. Now, here is what you're being told. I want to make sure you guys understand this, okay? Insulin resistance, prediabetes, and diabetes is only progressive if you stay on medications and don't know how to fix your underlying root problem. Then it is progressive. Once you make the decision and you decide, okay, I want to figure out and understand what is causing it and, and take the steps that you need to take to heal the body and fix the imbalance, then it's not progressive. Type two diabetes is 100% reversible, 100%. I've, I've seen it all the time. I've helped hundreds of ladies to do that, okay? But again, depending on how progressive your type two is, it's gonna take some time. And for some time, depending on if, if you have type two 20, 30, 40 years, it's just gonna take longer because your body's more damaged, right? It'll take longer, but it absolutely is reversible. And even so, if you've had diabetes for a super, super, super long time, and it, it does take a long time longer usually to reverse, at least you can start the process of it not being progressive. You can stop the process of it becoming worse for sure. But you've got to do it sooner before it turns into type 1.5. Once your diabetes turns into type 1.5, then you'll be insulin dependent for the rest of your life because your, your body is just kind of, it's been, it's, it's, it's tired it's, it, 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 and your organs now are starting to decline. Okay. So just know that, you know, you guys have that choice, but you've got to start making some decisions pretty quickly on that. Okay. Make sense. So here are the top anti-inflammatory foods. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we'll, we'll go over this now. Here are the top anti-inflammatory foods. So if you want to start decreasing your inflammation, here's some of the foods you can start eating right away. Green leafy vegetables, celery, turmeric, broccoli, green tea, oregano, berries. Now, when I say berries, I'm talking blackberries or blueberries. If you have insulin resistance and um, type 2 diabetes, these would be the ones that I would not take because your body can't necessarily 
um, manage the sugar from these berries, but they are the lowest glycemic on the glycemic index. Berries are the lowest. Uh, asparagus, cabbage, garlic, kombucha, and apple cider vinegar. These foods all will help you with your chronic uh, inflammation. Okay. Again, you have to you have to do this not just one time. Like you can't just say, okay, for tomorrow I'm going to have green leafy vegetables and cabbage all day, and like woohoo, that's going to be a start. Okay, but it's not going to bring down your inflammation in one day. Okay, this is stuff you have to incorporate into your life, and the, doing these foods is going to help. But you still have to understand the why. So there, do you see what I'm saying? Like these last two days, I've thrown a lot at you, right? With 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 what could be going on with your situation, and and we have some remedies, but there's so much that you have to understand about your specific situation which is why it's super important that you find somebody that can help kind of take your entire situation and say, okay, let me figure out, let me help you and see what's going on. Let's, what, what, how far are you in your prediabetes? How far are you in your insulin resistance? What blood labs have you done? You know, are you on type two? What medications are you on? What, how much damage has there been? What's your diet like? Do you, you know, do you have these symptoms? You, you need like a case manager, like a, you know, you need like a, you need an overseer right? To, to take a look at your case and help you because it's really, unless you've, you've studied this like I have for 30 years, you're not going to know what to do. It's going to be really hard, especially to be able to do it long-term, right? I mean, it, it's, it's the, the longer you've had type two or insulin resistance, the sooner you need to start taking the steps to get it fixed. And that's what I am so excited to be able to help you do. Okay. We are going to talk about, um, Three things that you can do immediately to start um, bringing your sugars down and to decrease, decrease your inflammation. But first, I'm going to bring on, I want you to meet somebody. I want you to meet uh, Susan. Susan, are you there? Hello. Let's get Susan on. Hi, Susan. Hi. How are you, honey? I'm great. You are? <laughs> Tell me why you're I'm great. great. I want to hear why you're great. Have you been listening to the, the class? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So and tell was, me, have you learned any, I mean, was it kind of, it's review for you, but when, when you hear it presented in a different way, does it kind of like, oh yeah, kind of makes you think about well, it. Well, it just, it just, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a reminder. And the more you're reminded about these things, the more it sticks. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, years ago when I was diagnosed, first off with the uh, insulin resistance, yeah, he drew me a picture and everything, but no one really talked about the seriousness and, and what to do. And well, then you the go thing, to right? another doctor. They, they don't tell you what to do. They're like, here. Well, they'll, they'll say, let's go on metformin because metformin is a, a, one of the main drugs they'll put you on for insulin resistance. But um, they don't ever have a solution because they, 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 they just know how to give you drugs, right? Well, and then, then the next doctor, well, well, your sugars are pretty high, you know, and that was it. And I, I never really realized the seriousness of it. And the longer you let it go, the worse it is and the harder it is. And right. then with the third doctor, well, we're going to put you on medication. And I took it for a couple of months, three months, maybe. And I spent more time in the bathroom than I did out. So, you know, that, uh, that was not going to fly with me. Yeah. And let's, let's talk and about when you, when you so first learned I, about the journey of getting better, your A1C was at 12 and your blood sugars were in the high hundreds, right? Yes. And so tell me what that 200. felt like. Two hundreds, <laughs> right? So did that scare you? Yeah. I, yeah, it scared me when I heard the 12. That's high you know, girl. 12, I, 12 A1C is really, that's, that's, that's really high. I mean, I, I knew I had a sugar addiction, but I had no idea that it was that bad. 
you know, and, um, I, you know, I, I really almost cried because I had no idea, but, but when you're addicted to the sugar, you, you don't pay that much of attention to the future, right. I guess. Right. You know, so what, what finally was it for you that made you say, I know you said the 12% kind of freaked you out. What was it yeah. that made you say, okay, I, I need to do something about this because otherwise what? Otherwise nothing. Otherwise I'm going to die. And that's basically what I felt like. Mm. And, um, when I, um, when I found out that it was still at nine and I could not do anything. He was going to put me on insulin. And I sat there in his office and I cried and I said, please, I said, I can't do this. You know, give me three months to turn it around. And I had been stalking you on Wednesday nights for months. And I thought <laughs> this lady probably can help me <laughs> probably well that's probably no, I, I understand well, you know I mean I was skeptic at, at at times you know because you're just not really sure you read and you get all different kinds of information you don't know what's right what's wrong what's up and what's down you know and so when we talked about it and plus I was having blood pressure problems and um, I just took the leap of faith and really and truly I've never looked back yeah I mean let's just share I mean these I feel kind of embarrassed because these are old stats but look at what you you did this was I think only in three months where you started your blood sugars were in the you said 200 yeah well we got your we got your a1c down to 6.2 now i know we're, we're due for another blood test and i'm sure it'll be down from this but look at it's, that difference yeah it's 5.7 now so oh, my word I'm, I'm due for another one and so um Shame yeah on me for not updating this look at <laughs> so you are you're you're reversing your diabetes isn't that, I mean, think of where you were a year ago, right? Because I always tell the girls who sign up with me, I say, I can't, I can't tell you how long it's going to take you to reverse your diabetes. Everybody's right. different, right? Some people right. can do it in three months. Some people have to do it, you know, it takes a while. But think of where you were a year ago. And mm -hmm. I mean, it didn't take you very, it took you only three months to get it down to 6.2, but now you're yeah. 5.7 and right. you're off your medications. I think you're just on one right now, right? Or half of one or something. Yeah, I'm, down. I'm on the blood pressure. And, and we've decreased that. Right. And you've reversed, you've basically reversed your diabetes. I like, to have, I, always say, I like to have, I like to have under 5. <laughs> point, under 5.7, but, right. but honestly, we'll get you there. And how amazing does this feel? It, it's, I, I can't, I, I mean, there are times when I really have to pinch myself and I mean, yeah, I boast to people at times because I'm proud of it you know, and I know it can be done, but you've got to work at it. You've got to discipline yourself. I mean, we're all going to fall forward, fail forward, as we put it uh, at times, but we pick ourselves up and get well, right I back. Have to, I have board. to call you out a little bit here because you are, <laughs> you are one of the busiest beavers in the academy. I mean, you are on the go 24-7 yeah. and you're remodeling yeah. and you're going up and down the stairs and you're climbing ladders and you're you're doing reconstruction and on your house. And yeah. you are the busiest person I know. I don't know anybody that has more energy than you. And and think yeah. of where you were a year ago, would you you were feeling so crappy? Would you crappy. been able to right? No, I couldn't I couldn't do this. <laughs> There's no way. All I wanted to do is lay down. So, you know, and I wasn't happy. I was not a happy person at all. So once I joined though, I mean, I have learned so much about nutrition, about, you know, and, and I have to say, even my husband has reaped the benefits from what you teach us. 
you know, he's lost 40 pounds. Those men, you know, they can lose weight so much faster. I know. Than <laughs> he's not, he's not taking statins. He's not taking blood pressure medicine. I mean, he's reaped the benefits too, but he knows if he's going to eat, he has to eat what I cook. <laughs> right. Right. So Susan, one last question. So was it, I mean, was it really hard to reverse your diabetes and you know, was, was, was the process really hard or was it rewarding? Let me say, tell, tell, tell me about that. Talk about that. It, it's not hard, but you've got to want it. Yeah. And if you want it, you can do it. That's key. That's you, it. You, that is it. That's because it. Because when people say to me, oh, it's going to be so hard. You know, I don't know if I can do this. It's going to be so hard. I'm thinking, well, let's see, you're on 10 medications right now. Right. You're, you're going to get worse. You're, you're in bed you're, with fatigue. You can hardly walk because you have so much mm -hmm. knee pain. Is that hard? Right. That's right. So why don't you pick your hard That's and right. start, doing, start doing the hard work of getting better mm -hmm. and work towards that? But like you said, it's all you have to, you have to want it. You have and I to think want the it. reason why most women will decide not to do anything about it is because of fear. They don't think that they've been told by their medical doctors. They've been told by them, they're not going to be able to change. And right. they've been scammed. There's been a lot yeah. of women oh, who yes. have paid lots of money mm -hmm. for scam programs that have gotten them no results. Well, this is not one of them. <laughs> I will tell you that right now. And the sisterhood, you always have support. You always get encouragement. And I wouldn't trade my sisters for nothing. Are you? <laughs> well, no, but that I'm so glad you brought up the sisterhood because yeah. I do believe that when you can go through this difficult yes. journey together with your girlfriends yes. and getting healing your body, when you have other people are going through it with you. You can share each other's journey and struggles mm -hmm. and you can grow together and get better together. It makes the process more fun. And, and I talk about this right. all the time. You guys know, I really try to make the hard work that we do fun. And we're always mm -hmm. doing these different things in the Academy. We're getting mm -hmm. results, but it's hard work, but I'm always trying to make it mm -hmm. fun. And all you girls have such a connection and that yes. has helped with your growth and it's helped with your yes. results, right? It does. It does. You know, that you're not down this road alone. And that makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. So. And you, can't put, you can't put a price on your health, right, Susan? Oh, no. I mean, you know, I've got a few good years left on me and <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have fun for the rest of it. You know you what? Know? What's going to take you out is, <laughs> is, is not your health. What's going to take you out is an accident from some activity that you're doing. <laughs> a ladder. <laughs> right falling on your head or something because you are yes. like an energizer bunny i've never seen anybody that 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 does so much <laughs> so that and that is a tribute to your decision to get your yeah. body healthy get off all those medications and right. reverse your health and and look at you right. girl you're beautiful you look at, and you just you're glowing and you're so healthy and i just i'm so proud i'm happy i'm happy you are happy for the first time in a long time. I'm happy. Yeah. So, and I have, I have you to thank, thank for that. You're awesome. I'm so happy for so you. you. <laughs> thank <laughs> Me you. Me too. Yeah. Thank you for, you know, just, uh, talking about this with your girlfriends here in the group and, you know, this, uh, the Academy is opening this week. So, um, any, anything you want to say to the girls about, you know, what they should consider when taking control of their health. Anything you want to say to them about that? Um, all I can say is that it didn't take overnight to get here and it's not going to take overnight to get there and don't give up on your health. You are worth it. You're do it. So grab it by the horns and go with it. Yeah. That's, that's great advice, girl. I love you, sister. Thank you for love sharing you too. so much. We will see You're you. Welcome. Uh, we'll see you on our, Later. we'll see you on our, yes. call okay. Bye. <laughs> bye. 
Awesome. Yes. So again, there's another story of when you make the decision to take ownership of your health and you find the right environment to be able to, you know, take the steps that you need to get healthy and you understand the why, you can reverse your diabetes. You can get off medications. You can have fun while you're doing it. You guys, it's so important to me when you do this hard work of trying to get healthy. Because right now, most of you, and I get this, most of you are not feeling very good. And the thought of trying to change is, is, is it just causes fatigue and anxiety, just making the decision to try to get better because you just don't feel very good. I hear you. I understand that too, which is why when we start doing this work, I will help you. I will help you navigate these conversations with your medical doctor. I will help you to, you know, start somewhere so that you can start getting some relief. I know a lot of you are sitting here, you're watching this and you're like, I just don't feel good. I'm tired. I have aches and pains. My blood sugars are high. I have to prick my finger every day. My doctor's not supportive. I just don't know what to do. I'm depressed. I, I just, I want to give up. I hear you ladies. I do. So I want to tell you that there is a solution for you. There is a solution. Okay. Um, so I want to close today by talking about on your sheet here, we talked about the, um, the top foods that decrease inflammation. But now what I want to do is give you three things that you can do immediately. This is also a recap from yesterday. Three things you can do immediately to start decrease that inflammation. Quit putting sugar in your body. Okay. You have to heal the body on a cellular level. And on a cellular level, that means that we have to decrease the inflammation in the body, the chronic inflammation. Okay. If you don't fix the chronic inflammation, we can't heal the body on the cellular level. And then we have to burn the sugar out of the cell. And how we burn the sugar out of the cell is by one way is movement, right? One way is not putting sugar in, but movement, walking. If you guys can walk, if you can sit in your chair and, and do some exercises, we have to burn some of that sugar. And, but you also have to quit putting it in, okay? So um, this was class two. I really hope that you guys were you learned a lot today it was a lot about again about insulin resistance and i want to close with talking a little bit about brandy um brandy severe insulin resistance i actually am going to be posting her interview here today in the group so you can watch it but her she her top three goals were to lose weight nutritionist structure and to decrease her pain you're also going to hear uh, brandy talk tomorrow night you're going to hear her live um, tomorrow night's live cast so make sure you come tomorrow but brandy had severe insulin resistance in fact she was so frustrated that she was even considering weight loss surgery but when she decided when she decided that uh -uh, i want to learn how to fix my body on a cellular level this is what happened down 48 pounds 44 inches down four sizes and she's on her, her way to totally reversing her insulin resistance and being able to fix her body at a cellular level. It's already started, obviously, and be able to maintain that for the rest of her life. And then you heard from Shannon. You heard from, from Shannon at the beginning of the, of the broadcast tonight. Again, severe insulin resistance, not pre-diabetic yet, not diagnosed with type 2. Her A1C is normal, but she could not lose weight no matter how, how hard she tried. You heard her. She couldn't, lose, she couldn't lose anything. She was stuck, and she was exercising five to six times a week. So until you fix your body in a cellular level, you can forget about losing weight and you can forget about feeling better. And so um, I'm really excited for you guys to be able to hear their stories. And remember, tomorrow we are doing our live broadcast, our live cast. And tomorrow the session is about hormones and we're talking for a long time tomorrow night. Tomorrow's a long class because we're talking about hormones and, and hormones is the main reason why all you guys are feeling icky. And if you have inflammation, your hormones are off. So we're going to talk about hormones tomorrow night. The broadcast tomorrow starts at 5 p.m. Central, which will be 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 Central, 6 Eastern. 
and we're going to go for a few hours. You're going to hear from a lot of these women and we're going to get it. We're going to take a deep dive into hormones. Okay. So that's tomorrow. So hopefully you were able to fill out your workbooks and I want you to fill out what was your takeaway from today? I want you to fill this out. Tell me what your takeaways from today and then tag me in the group. I want to hear what was it that stood out for you today. I want to hear from you. I want to hear that you guys are engaged. I want to see what you're taking away from this session. And then I want you to tell me what is what excites you about lowering your sugars and seeing lower numbers. What excites you about that? And then I would also love to hear your feedback on things that, you know, you have questions that you want to ask me. Make sure you tag me in the group. I will be watching your comments. And tomorrow we are talking about hormones. So make sure you tune in tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be an amazing day. And uh, we will see you tomorrow, everybody. Bye for now. Hormones. Bye.